Hello, and welcome to the Volunteer Virtues Network. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host on Something is Rotten in the State of Denmark. Today, I have Miguel Claire Nissen with me, and we'll talk a bit about his you know, book, The Manipulation and the Weapon of Guilt, which you can find on Amazon. I'll send a link in the description. Welcome to you, Miguel. It's nice to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. So we should talk a bit about your book. What do? Where do we want to start off? Well, that's kind of a large subject. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> to start off with, uh, where do we start off? Well, maybe maybe we should start off with the title itself. I think many people believe that manipulism uh, is is kind of a you know. A, a new word for socialism, leftism, and such now, which is not, it is not. Uh, manipulism is a social psychological theory uh, that I developed uh, to explain the phenomena of uh, what you refer to as the antelope, uh, which is a common phenomena that exists in, in all uh, left-wing dominated societies. Uh, and this phenomena can be uh, explained via uh, what you refer to in psychology as malignant narcissism, which is a, a, a phenomena that starts to occur in a country when, you know, when the country's population is driven by a severe inferiority complex. So um, basically severe narcissism. Um, and, uh, the title itself, Manipulism and the Weapon of Guilt, is because without manipulism, you can't subjugate people emotionally. Uh, but while if you do, you then have the option of projections and manipulation, etc., because people are feeling inferiority, and, and so they're easy, easily driven by guilt. Uh, we, we could go into a subject. I know that you're, uh, what, you were 27 years old, so you should remember an old commercial uh, I know you live in a different part of Denmark than I do, but uh, I do remember um, in the older days, uh, at some point they had a like a, a, a commercial or some some way of advertising uh, in, in the subway system um, in in uh, in Copenhagen um, because. If you go to New York and other places, you can't enter the subway system unless you you pay because they're a little, you know, I don't know what you call them. Like you know, you got to go through some kind of uh, you know door that holds you back. You can't. You got to pay the dollar or two dollars or whatever. But everything in in Copenhagen is based on the fact that you can actually enter the station uh, um, without having paid, and then it's more like a, a you know a system where you kind of trust that people just pay. Um, and I remember they had this commercial uh, called a flowman, which means an embarrassment. And, and you know, th this is one of the things I thought about regarding um, the usage of the weapon of guilt. Um, you should feel, you should know these feelings yourself. Um, I've been trying to, uh, you know, explain how the weapon of guilt is used. Um, in, in these kind of uh, uh, collectivist, collectivized societies, um, I also have a, a social experiment in my book. Actually, I've got several of them. Um, but uh, one where you have to put this: um, if you go grocery shopping, uh, you you um, you enter the store and you you pick up your groceries and you put them on this conveyor belt. And you know this as a fact. If you go into Denmark, you go into this, you know, you, you place your, your groceries, you have to place this, uh, this, this triangle that divides your groceries from the next. But if you don't, these people go mental. Yeah, I can't stand that. Not exactly. Not. And I, I did that as a research thing because this proves people's entitlement. But what is unique about this is how the society of ours have implemented uh, this this guilt thing. So most people, and I, I usually say, if you want to understand what gentle or tall puppy syndrome or you know these kind of syndromes uh, uh, or what it means to be subjugated and controlled by others, uh, this is a really good way of, of testing oneself. 
uh, because you can actually enter the store and you, you can choose when you enter the store not to place this triangle at the end. And then search your feelings. And if you feel guilt, then, then you should understand exactly what I mean. Because this guilt feeling, why should you feel guilt for not placing a simple triangle? I do it I mean, because it, it's, it's easy to make it easier for the next guy because it pisses me off when I have to move behind someone and take it for myself. But that's fine. But we just debated voluntarism just yeah. a minute ago. And how can you tell me that you're a voluntarist? If you think that people must do something. I, I don't think people must do something. It just pisses me off that I have to go around this guy and take it instead of he, him just doing it. So I'm doing it for the next guy. And that's but, that's ex but, but that's exactly the point uh, where I'm, I'm saying, you know, I've been trying to work with what I refer to. You call it voluntarism, etc. I've, as you know, I'm, I'm now writing the book the, called The Philosophy of Individualism, which is the next book coming out. Um, and I'm trying to work with this, this, you know, this internal process of, of trying to simply let go of, of, of any emotions that are towards anything that someone else must. So you or regardless if it's you, but, it, you know, you know, we I, I, I don't get angry at all. I don't I don't believe that I have the right to get angry for someone, uh, you know, not doing something. I don't have the right to, 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 I can, there's no expectation. Do you understand my point? There is no expectation. And so I can't get angry at them. Of course, it's really cool if they do, and then you should get a happy. We talked about it. We had a short, you know, talk the other day about how I treat my kids. I don't, uh, te teach my kids that at home they should say thank you for the food. And it's not that I don't think it's right that they should, but I do truly believe that, you know, why should my kids say thank you for the food just because they must say it rather than the joy of them actually saying it because they want to, because they can voluntarily choose not to. Do you understand the, the, the philosophy behind you know, this, this whole thing, of course, my kids are taught if they went to your home, now we're out and it's different rules. But in my house, it's built on, you know, individuality and, and you know, and, and everything should be voluntarily, uh, you know, and, and nothing is real if it's a must. So teaching your kids that they must say thank you for the food is not voluntarily. And so it's, it's just, they're just are, they say, are they even saying thank you for the food? Or are they just doing it because they must? Do you understand my point? Yeah. Do they appreciate the gesture of someone making the food? Or do they just say it because they have to do it? Exactly. Yeah. And that's the, whole, that's the whole point behind these kind of things. It is trying to let go of, of these norms or normal or whatever. I mean, I'm completely against norms. Uh, in, in general, I believe that norms are an individual thing, completely individual thing. You know, I, I think it's very important um, to 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 distinct between self and other. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to say people and I think the example of you getting agitated uh, if people don't place that triangle uh, is one of those things where one could say, oh, okay, that's fine. I can understand that you can get agitated because it is annoying. The system is kind of, you know, it's, it's made in a way that you're supposed to kind of take the triangle, put it on. Fair enough. I understand the perspective. But, it, you know, as people, if we can emotionally try to let go uh, of the perspective or, or, you know, that others should do something, which is, is feelings of entitlement, you know, if we let go of those, we actually relieve ourselves of lots of stresses. Um, we could go into subjects like um, you live in Jutland, so I'm not sure that people just bang into you when you walk on the street very often because there are probably more space than in Copenhagen, I assume. Uh, but but uh, if you go to Copenhagen, sorry? Yeah, a lot more space. I it's You have like the whole street for yourself sometimes, so that's fine. Yeah. But if you go to Copenhagen, um, you know, people will, I mean, I find it humorous, extremely humorous um, that you, you have the new subway system, the metro system, right? And, and 
uh, each train leaves every second minute, every second minute. And still these people are, are running down these escalators. I mean, it's like, dude, what's up with this? Why are you stressing? The next train leaves in two minutes. I mean, come on. I mean, the whole, the whole, and, 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 and we've gotten into a, you know, routine where, you know, people, they place themselves right in front of the, 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 the doors so no one can get out of the train because they only leave about 10 seconds until the doors close again. I mean, the whole system is built on, on these stresses. And I think it's very important to start uh, understanding how what well, we, we could also move forward. I, I truly believe that, you know, the more stressed we are and, and the more society uh, achieves this stress in people, the more they can control us. Because if we're stressed, we don't have much time left over to go home and read, for example, my book. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. And then they can start controlling people that way. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of that it has something to do with the taxation, actually, because the more they tax, the more you have to work and the less time you have for yourself. Exactly. And when we used you, to have. And when you have time for yourself, you get beaten in the head if you don't use it on other people, actually. <laughs> so it's just insane. But that's exactly when, when, when people not need to start becoming their own masters. Yeah. Their exactly. own mentors, their own. You know, and, and, and these are the whole, you know, the, the whole point behind uh, uh, individualism, you know, true right wing freedom in itself. Because is it freedom? I always I always talk to people about the, the fact that I think many people mis, mislead themselves by the perspective that of, of what freedom is. Because many people forget that freedom is emotional, too. And you just mentioned one thing. You know, people try to beat you emotionally or or project at you that you're bad if you use the time on yourself, etc. Yeah. But then again, I mean, it's your life. It's your time. I can understand it if you have children. People could say you need to spend more time on your children. That's fine. Yeah, but, we but, could, but the children didn't, didn't uh, accept getting born into the world. So you basically the, made the decision for them. So... You owe them, I would say you owe them something, at least, but just, that's just me. Why should you get children for the fun of it? It's a decision you make as an adult, and, yeah. you know, even if, if, if you had an oops, it's still your choice. You still... Exactly. Yeah, you still, yeah. And the, the children be, never had, had anything to say in the first place, so I think you should waste more time on your children than yourself. But this is exactly, this is this is funny, this subject, because it, this is exactly what the leftist usually uses as, as a, a coercion technique uh, uh, to project that, like, oh, it's not all people that choose their parents, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but I agree, we all are created, we all created equally, but you all have to achieve your own achievements. You, you see, this is exactly the problem with, with leftism, that we've gotten to a point where it's okay uh, for someone to, to basically make your achievements theirs. We, we talked about it the other day, how, how, how people, uh, you know, the collectivist feels, a collect, they, they live in what I refer to as a collective ego. You know, leftists don't, uh, they don't have self-esteem. Like I say, they, they have self-regard, okay? Um, and they feel a collective feeling. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I think it was last year or the year before, and remember when we had the last Olympics, but um, I, I, I was with a friend and we were in his, in his shop and, and suddenly this guy comes in and he's like all up and running, right? He's, he's all enthusiastic, enthusiastic about uh, the fact that the Denmark rode, uh, you know, a boat, uh, whatever you call it, it's, you know, one of these these long boats, whatever. Uh, and and six people, you know, in the Olympics had won. And and the way that he he spoke about it made you feel like he felt he had sat in the boat himself. Yeah, it's, it's like it, it was his achievement. And I'm like, you know, the, the way that you can brainwash people today to, to give them this fictive contentment of, of, of I am a Dane and we won rowing or I am a Dane and we won the, the European football cup or whatever. And I'm like, what's up with this we? 
What's up with this? I never played any football in that game. Come on. I wasn't even watching. We didn't do shit. No, exactly. I'm, I'm not into this collective feeling either. I don't mind watching some sports and have fun with pe people, but it, it's still 11 men on, on the course that have this, you know, that, that uh, you know, that, that win. I mean, of course, you can you can have a feeling with these people, but the, the, the fact here is to try to make people understand how, how you change people into uh, uh, not being individuals anymore um, and rather achieve their um their their contentment um from from e external sources um you know i could go deeper we could go back to the subject about my book uh where i'm trying to basically to cut it down shortly um the way that leftism works and and what eg america is facing right now is that um, the, the lower class uh, is slowly um, subjugating society emotionally. This process has happened in my country, or our country, um, Denmark too, already. And it's taken, what, 150 years to reach these psychopathic levels that we have in Denmark. I should state that, yeah, as I say in the book, I, I expect that about 70 percent, two-thirds of the Danish population are driven by psychopathic narcissism, in other words, narcissistic personality disorder. Um, but the process that happens and, 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 and the, the control system, which is emotional in democratic socialism or what they prefer to call welfare system, um, is run by the fact that first you take away people's ability to say, I am good at something. And I think important is then to explain that uh, what people then say is they call you arrogant if you say I'm good at something, all right? You know this for a fact, we all lived it, we all heard it many times, you're arrogant, you believe in yourself. And I think it's important to, to, to let people know that arrogance is when you, you know, the, the, stating that you're good at something, I am really good at, as an author, I'm a really good author, I'm good at what I do, um, is not arrogance. It is, you know, uh, simple uh, confidence. But to say that I'm better at um, better at uh, writing books than you, or that I am the best at writing books, is a statement that it makes comparison to others, and so it's grandiose and arrogant. Um, but the main point is that but first well, you take it well, first. Well, can I just uh, cut in for a second? But but if you have written a book that sells that excels in everything and sells uh, more copies than any other book, couldn't you say that you're the best writer at the moment at least, or have but, written the best book at least, or something like that? Sure, but I I wouldn't see any need to because it. Yeah, but but you could do it, and that wouldn't be. Could do it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's not like we have to. You know, it, it doesn't have to be black and white. Mm. I'm not saying that people can't. Remember again, when I'm talking about narcissism, you got to remember again that if you have a statement occasionally, but if you want to, if you will end up walking around feeling completely grandiose and I'm the best at this and I'm the best at that, it's not the point. The point is to simply be able to say I'm good at something. Hey, I'm good at football. I was good at that, etc. I'll give you a good example. When I teach individualism to people, I don't tell my people, oh my God, you're so good at this. I ask my kids. Where are you good at that? Because I want them to find that that emotion themselves. You know, it needs to come from them. Do you understand my point? Yeah. Rather than, than than me adulterating the children or people around me, people need to find confidence from themselves and not from other sources. That is individual. I think you're right in that actually. Um, Children has to find, no, they don't have to, but I think it's a beneficial thing to, for children to learn what they're good at for themselves. So they can, what is, what's it called, um, so they can identify with and, and maybe if they like it, actually choose to do something about it instead of grown-ups telling them what to do. So. Exactly. 
it is it is about individuality but they need to, to it's also well i'll give you an example if you look at danish people and and my own child i i, I was actually about before i started uh you know working on on the philosophy of individualism which is, again is my next book um i have two more books waiting and one of them i i have a whole chapter where um i was going to work with the subject of of comparing the leftist to the six-year-old child because there is no not not much difference um it, it, often my daughter comes to me and she says uh, daddy daddy look 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 at my drawing isn't it beautiful and and if you look at danish people and the way they behave as adults at the age of 40 they still need this adoration hey did you like my did you like that and am i not good at this and i you know always asking people and and it's called narcissistic supply because of low self esteem but let me let me cut it out easily the main point was that as i said first you take away people's ability to say they're good at anything okay then you denigrate them okay so now they can't create contentment they can't they can't create self esteem okay then you create lower steam in them by denigrating. Oh, like, as I said, you know, as I use in my book, uh, as an example, uh, um, sarcasm. You know, I walked into a cafe recently uh, and a woman, you know, I got in a conversation with a Swedish lady and suddenly the owner pops up right behind me and she's like, oh, I wish you were radio so I could turn you off. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You smile, it's funny. But she just got, the, she she basically just told me, you know, denigrated me. What awful way. I mean, you know, I, I, I tell this to Americans and they're like, are Danes like that? Yeah, they're like that and they do it all the time. They even think it's funny. I mean, come on. And, and so I, 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 I was, it wasn't the, her statement that was funny. It was the, the manipulative behavior of, of passive aggressiveness. I was thinking it was funny, but yeah. I oh, well, now, come on. I mean, it is funny, and that's the problem with sarcasm is that you can use it in a way that it's funny. I usually I use two, two, two examples in my book. Another one is my brother, because if I called up my brother right now, I could put it on a speakerphone, right? And I would prove to you that if I said to my brother, hey, I met a new girl, his statement would be like it's always been my whole life. Is she blind? <laughs> And that is funny. It is funny. But the main point is that what is behind this statement? Yeah. I mean, basically, he's saying you're ugly. Why, should, why would she want you? And, you know, I, I try to explain to people what, what this, this ambient abuse is. You know, there is a difference between getting beaten, you know, in a, in a, uh, a female getting beaten in a, by the male in a relationship but also, you know, there's there's verbal abuse, you know. Exactly. If, I, if I was to call you stupid for two days in a row, I, I go to your house and I walk around and I called you stupid for two days in a row. You will feel like an inflated, like a flat tire within them two days. Yeah, I, I've lived with people like that, actually, so I, I know the feeling. <laughs> mm -hmm, exactly. And, and this is exactly the whole game behind this whole thing. Uh, you know, the weapon of guilt, you know, I, I, I had a, a, a lady in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a bar once tell me a story about, you know, a manipulation. And she, she told me how, um, how a, a friend of her at work had approached her and it was getting closer to the, to the election. And she, um, this lady then asked her, and said, um, so who are you voting for? And this was when Liberal Alliance, which is the farthest right wing, which is still left wing, <laughs> when they started, uh, uh, you know, the, you know, to have any say in politics. So she said, I am voting Liberal Alliance. And this, this socialist lady looked at her and said, oh, I didn't expect you would vote for someone like that. You are such a good person. You know what I mean? And, it, it, you know, it's this whole, these people are disgusting. The, the way that they manipulate, I mean, the, the way that they, 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 you know, all you have to do is go behind what socialists do. I, I very often, um, you know, I very often use, you know, some of the expressions. And, you know, the, the left, you know, they, they project themselves or, 
or try to make themselves look like they're so nice, you know. But then, then when you when you see a Dane walk up to someone who has a different different skin color, yeah, uh, than than the, the average you and I, yeah, the first thing a Dane would ask, and you probably even do that yourself. But Where are you from? Is, no, 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 hold on. Where oh. are you from? Exactly. Where are you from? Rather than what's your background? Yeah. And, and this is exactly the point where I'm going to people. I'm saying, listen, this is deeply racist, man. This is deeply denigrating. If someone has to listen to this their whole life and they're actually born in Denmark, eventually they will feel like I, I, I don't want you here. You know what I mean? So the, the whole perspective and the, 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 the behavior that we have in this country needs to seriously, you know, get a beating, to be honest. I mean, people here... Uh, uh, you know, they're rude. But let me, oh, hold on, because I, I keep moving forth and back between these subjects. I wanted to finish this subject about this. So first... Yeah, we only have four minutes left, actually. That's fine. That's fine. I'll give you four minutes to this. Uh, okay. So first, as I said, the way that this subjugation system emotionally works is by first you take away people's right to, to believe that they can express that they're good at something. Second, you denigrate them. Now you create inferiority. What happens then when you have inferiority complex is that you start seeing anxiety. When you feel insecure and anxiety, etc., you start being dependent. <coughs> when you have inferiority complex, also a phenomena starts to exist, which is called excessive need of adoleration, affirmation, etc., so they need to be affirmed, just like little kids. Hey, isn't my drawing really good? And this is exactly how Danes behave on average, right? They always have to be told they're good because they feel inferiority, severe, severe inferiority. And on top, just to finish it all, if anyone wants to dispute the fact that I'm saying the Danish people are leftists, even the ideology of his, you know, socialism is built on narcissistic uh, psychopathic narcissism, then let's add on, as I said, excessive need for adoleration. We all know they're deeply arrogant. They're envious. Okay. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, and, and they have, um, they, they exploit others for personal gain, right? They feel entitled. And without these tendencies, you, you, you can't have these tendencies without uh, uh, what's referred to as pathological narcissism, yeah, also yeah, like, known as, as um, grandiosity and self-importance. Yeah, I so, the, the envious part, uh, there was an episode recently where Mask McKinney Muller, the, the, what's it called, uh, the ship guy, <laughs> he, he, he donated one million Danish crowns or something like that to the public school system and people were saying that he, he didn't pay enough taxes if he could afford that <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just ridiculous uh, yeah exactly it's never enough I always say it like this give the hand to a socialist and it will take the whole arm yeah exactly it's just I mean, crazy yeah but yeah we should probably round off do, do you have any last words for advertising the book or something else not much i mean i usually tell people this i mean the book sells pretty well i don't care much about the money if you can find me my name is michael claire nissen if you can find me on facebook friend me i i accept all friend requests and if you do i will gladly send you the the ebook of 10 chapters completely for free awesome thank you for doing this this was a pleasure let's do it again some other time. Sure thing.